Hi everyone. Today we will discuss the side effects of anti-cancer agents in easy way. Let us take one drug aspirin. Aspirin is going to produce few of the side effects like the gastric irritation, drowsiness, rashes and other types of side effects. So it can produce a list of side effects but among these we can easily say that one of the important side effect is the gastric irritation which can produce some abdominal pain as well as abdominal bleeding because the aspirin belongs to a class of uh, drugs NSAIDs and many of the NSAIDs can produce some gastric bleeding and gastric irritation. And particularly aspirin is having the more uh, risk for this gastric bleeding because of its uh, additional antiplatelet activity. But when we are coming to the anti-cancer agents, because we are going to use anti-cancer agents for a longer period compared with any other category of drugs. So whenever we use the anti-cancer agents, we can see a, a large number of side effects. We can observe the side effects like headache, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, pulmonary fibrosis, loss of hair. In this way, the list is uh, very large when we see the side effects of the anti-cancer agents. So remembering that side effects of anti-cancer agents is not an easy task. But here we can see if you have the side effects which are specific to a particular drug in the anti-cancer agents. For example, here you can see that pulmonary fibrosis. Very few drugs like uh, bleomycin can produce the pulmonary fibrosis. Even other drugs are also having some risk of pulmonary fibrosis, but this toxicity is more pronounced with the drugs like bleomycin. So in the anti-cancer agents, we can see a list of common side effects produced by all these agents, as well as we can also see if you have the specific side effects belonging to each anti-cancer agent. Here in this video, we will see what are the different types of side effects of anti-cancer agents and how easily we can remember by using logical approach. So the adverse effects of the anti-cancer agents can be classified mainly into two types like the common side effects and what are the common side effects? These common side effects are mainly observed because of their action on the cell division. You know anti-cancer agents are going to inhibit the cell division where the cancerous cells are responsible for the uncontrolled cell division. So many of the anti-cancer agents their main target is to inhibit this uh, cell division. So this Inhibition of cell division may lead to few of the side effects which may be commonly related with uh, many of these anti-cancer agents. Similarly, we can also see the few of the specific side effects of the anti-cancer agents which are related to some tissue specific toxicity produced by few of the anti-cancer agents. So now let us go with the both common as well as the specific side effects of the anti-cancer agents. So let us start with the common side effects. The common side effects of anti-cancer agents are mainly due to the inhibition of the cell division. So whenever the cells are undergoing a continuous cell division, there these anti-cancer agents can produce uh, an inhibitory effect which may result in a significant side effect. So which type of uh, regions where we can observe the continuous cell division? So the one of the very important one is the bone marrow. At the bone marrow, continuous cell division is going to take place thereby it produces various types of uh, monocytes and anti-cancer agents can inhibit the cell division at the bone marrow so most of the anti-cancer agents can produce the bone marrow depression so this bone marrow depression is also commonly known as myelosuppression so many of the anti-cancer agents like the alkylating agents cytotoxic antibiotics anti-metabolites and many of the drugs produce the myelosuppression as the main side effect because of inhibition of the cell division at the bone marrow what happens with this myelosuppression? Whenever the bone marrow is going to be depressed, it may lead to the, the decrease in of few of these monocytes like the leukopenia. When the leukocytes are going to be decreased, it leads to the leukopenia. As well as it can also produce a neutropenia, neutrophil count is going to be decreased. And it can also produce anemia, erythropoiesis can also be inhibited. And here the leukopenia is very important. Leukocytes play an important role in fighting against the infections. So whenever there is a leukopenia caused by anti-cancer agents, this may result in the delayed wound healing. So just like in the diabetic patients, we can also observe a delayed wound healing in the patients treated with anti-cancer agents because uh, anti-cancer agents can depress the bone marrow leading to leukopenia. Similarly, another one is the GI epithelium. The cells at the gastrointestinal epithelium is always going to be dividing. The old epithelium is going to be replaced by new epithelial cells. Again, anti-cancer agents can affect the GA epithelium, thereby they can produce the, the GA epithelial damage. 
as well as they can also produce a loss of epithelium. So whenever there is no epithelial cells at the GI tract or even they are damaged, they can increase the exposure of these nerve terminals present at the GI epithelial cells. So these nerve terminals are very important for uh, getting the information whenever a stimuli is going to be present in, within the GI tract. So when these are going to be highly exposed, so they can produce uh, a reflux action and it can result in a nausea and vomiting in the patient. So even a mild stimuli can produce a strong signal so that they produce a reflux action resulting in the nausea and vomiting. And few of the anti-cancer agents like the cisplatin are so toxic that they can stimulate the CTZ, chemoreceptor trigger zone, thereby they again can produce the nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting is a, another common side effect of many of the anti-cancer agents and for this two mechanisms may be possible, one may be the damage to the epithelium but many of the anti-cancer agents which are bitter substances can stimulate directly the CTZ thereby they can induce the nausea and vomiting. So cisplatin is uh, one of the drugs which is having the high capacity to induce the CTZ leading to nausea and vomiting. And fortunately we have few of the drugs like uh, 5-HT3 antagonists such as Ondon Citron, Granny Citron, Tropy Citron. These drugs can inhibit the CTZ thereby they can control the nausea and vomiting in the anti-cancer chemotherapy. And the next one is the hair follicles. Again the hair growth is because of the continuous cell division. At the hair follicles again continuous cell division takes place which results in the increased hair follicular growth. Now the anti-cancer agents can inhibit this hair follicular growth thereby they can result in the loss of hair. So this loss of hair is called as alopecia. So alopecia is one of the important side effect of many of the anti-cancer agents because of their inhibition on the hair follicular growth. Next one is the growth hormones. Growth hormones can release their mediators like the growth factors. These growth factors play an important role in the cell division. These growth factors can stimulate the kinase cascade systems which may result in the cellular signaling and thereby they promote the cell division. So this kinase cascade may result in the growth in the children. Particularly in the children we can observe the growth rate is more compared with the adults. So this uh, growth factors related uh, cellular signaling is more important in the children. So when we use these anti-cancer agents particularly in the children they can inhibit this uh, kinase cascade thereby they can produce a decreased growth in the children. So in this way anti-cancer agents can stunt the growth of the children because they are going to acting on the cell divisions. So next where we can see the continuous cell division. So next one is the fetal growth. Again within the fetus we can observe a continuous cell division. Again here the anti-cancer agents can inhibit the cell division when these drugs are given to the pregnant woman. So the anti-cancer agents can produce some teratogenicity thereby they can produce some fetal damage. So anti-cancer agents should be carefully given to the pregnant woman and they are having a high risk to produce the teratogenicity. Now what is the next area where we can observe a continuous cell division? So the next one is the germline cells. So within the germlines we can observe both meiosis as well as the mitosis. So mitotic division is again one of a good drug target for the many of these anti-cancer agents. So anti-cancer agents can inhibit this mitotic division thereby they can produce the sterility in the both male as well as the females. Next one is the normal cells. Generally we can observe in the normal tissue cell division takes place at a controlled fashion so we can observe a controlled cell division. But in the cancerous cells this cell division is uncontrolled so cells are going to be proliferated without any control. So in order to inhibit this we can use the anti-cancer agents but sometimes the anti-cancer agents can act on the normal cells which are not cancerous. They can modify this controlled cell division thereby they lead to the again uncontrolled cell division and generation of the cancer within the normal cells. So that's why anti-cancer agents are carcinogenic in nature. When they are inappropriately used, again they can induce the cancer. This may be because of their effect on the genetic mutations due to their carcinogenicity. So in this way, these are the various common side effects of the anti-cancer agents. They can affect the bone marrow leading to bone marrow depression which produces leukopenia, neutropenia, anemia and leukopenia lead to the delayed in wound healing. They can inhibit the hair follicular growth leading to alopecia. They can inhibit the cell division at the GI epithelium leading to the exposure of the nerve terminals as well as the nausea and vomiting. 
They can also directly stimulate the CTJ resulting in the nausea and vomiting. They can affect the cell division within the children, fetus, as well as the germlines, resulting in the teratogenicity, stunted growth in the children, and uh, sterility in the patients. And finally, many of these anti-cancer agents can induce the cancer in the normal cells, so they are carcinogenic in nature. So these are the various common side effects of the anti-cancer agents. Now let us go with the specific side effects of the anti-cancer agents. Anti-cancer agents can produce a specific tissue toxicity by acting on the different types of organs. So they can act on the various organs like the heart, they can affect the other organs like the lungs, they can affect the GI epithelium or they can also affect the eye and they can also affect the bladder. So in this way they can produce a toxicity at the different tissues leading to tissue specific toxicity. So here we can remember the specific side effects of these anti-cancer agents by taking a small prefixes. So we can remember the side effects in any way and here is one of the way such that we can remember the specific side effects of most of these anti-cancer agents. So let us take here cyclo produce the cis and vinca produce the neuro and blio is for fibro and doxo for cardio and finally plateau for the oto. That means here the cyclo, cyclo indicates the cyclophosphamide which produces the cyst formation, it produces a cystitis. Vinca, vinca alkaloids produce the neuropathy. Blio is for fibro, bleomycin produces a pulmonary fibrosis and doxo produce cardiotoxicity and platinum compounds produce a ototoxicity. Similarly, cytar is for the site. Site is related with the organ eye. So, cytarbine is going to produce a toxicity on the eye. Similarly, irono can be remembered as idea. So, irono tican produce the diarrhea. So, irono is the diarrhea. Now, let us see in detail about these specific side effects. So, first one is the bladder toxicity. Drugs like cyclophosphamide and ephosphamide, both of these drugs belonging to the alkylating agents particularly these are the nitrogen mustards and these agents can produce a inter or intra strand cross linkage within the dna but these drugs can be split into one of a active metabolite acrolein acrolein is a one of a cytotoxic metabolite produced from these drugs when they are administered into the body this acrolein can produce a bladder toxicity resulting in the hemorrhagic cystitis so this hemorrhagic cystitis is because of uh, depletion of the thial groups within the bladder cells. So the loss of the thial groups is uh, responsible for the bladder toxicity. So in order to prevent this bladder toxicity, we can give the thial group donors externally. N-acetyl cysteine acts as a thial group donor, so which can prevent the hemorrhagic cystitis. Similarly, second one is a neurotoxicity. Neuro is for the vinc alkaloids. So here the vinc alkaloids like the vincristine, vinblastin, these two drugs are the natural alkaloids. And we can also have the, some of the semi-synthetic derivatives like the vindesin, vinorelbin. All these can produce a neurotoxicity. Similarly, other plant alkaloids like the taxanes. Taxanes include the paclitaxel, docetaxel, which are again produce a neurotoxicity. And platinum compounds like the cisplatin and carboplatin can also induce the neurotoxicity. So all these drugs can produce peripheral neuropathy in the patient which can be observed as a desensitization in the patient resulting in the numbness as well as some tingling in the hands and feet as well as burning pain. All this can be observed in the patient because of peripheral neuropathy. So you can remember here, so two plant derivatives like the vincolclides and taxanes can produce the peripheral neuropathy along with the platinum compounds. Third one is the cardiotoxicity. So one of the drug produces cardiotoxin is a doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is an anthracycline antibiotic. This doxorubicin acts by generation of the free radicals. These free radicals can cause a damage to the cardiac membrane which may lead to the cardiotoxicity. And then the related anthracycline antibiotic is the donorubicin which can also produce some cardiotoxicity but compared with the doxorubicin it is having the less cardiotoxicity. And then the drug is the trastuzumab. Trastuzumab is a monoclonal antibody which is going to target the epidermal growth factor receptors. And this drug can also produce a congestive heart failure. So whenever we combine anti-cancer agents, the doxorubicin and trastuzumab should not be combined because both of these can produce some cardiotoxicity. 
and fourth one is the lung toxicity here we have two drugs one is the bleomycin bleomycin is a cytotoxic antibiotic and another drug is the busulfan busulfan is a sulfur mustard again belonging to the alkylating acids you can see both of these drugs are starting with the letter b so both of these drugs can produce a pulmonary fibrosis many of the anti cancer agents can produce a pulmonary fibrosis at a very high doses and for a long term treatment but these two drugs are having the more risk to induce the pulmonary fibrosis so whenever these drugs are given the lung functionality should be thoroughly checked in order to prevent the pulmonary fibrosis and again bleomycin can generate the free radicals which may be responsible for the lung toxicity and pulmonary fibrosis fifth one is the ototoxicity so cisplatin is one of a platinum compound which can produce some ototoxicity and a related drug is a carboplatin which is having some less risk of ototoxicity compared with the cisplatin and because of this ototoxicity these drugs can produce the loss of hearing and deafness in the patient because of this side effect the cisplatin should not be combined with the other drugs like the aminoglycosides as well as the loop diuretics which also produce the ototoxicity and already we have discussed the cisplatin can directly stimulate the ctz chemoreceptor trigger zone so that it can produce the nausea and vomiting and particularly this nausea and vomiting produced by cisplatin can be prevented by ondon citron which is a 5ht3 antagonist sixth one is the effect on eye so cytarabine cytarabine is one of an anti metabolite so this cytarabine can affect the eye thereby it can produce some chemical conjunctivitis and seventh one is the effect on git so drugs like the irinotecan and topotecan these are the two drugs which are belonging to the campotecins again these are the natural products so these drugs can produce some diarrhea in the patients so we have already discussed we can remember this but like an idea ironotic can produce the diarrhea so these are the various specific side effects of the anti cancer agents cyclophosphamide produce cystitis vincalclad produce neuropathy bleomycin produce fibrosis doxo produce cardiotoxicity platinum compounds produce ototoxicity cytarabine affects the eye leading to conjunctivitis and ironotic can produce the diarrhea in this way we can remember the specific side effects of the anti cancer agents so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends and post your valuable comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video